to this particular session. So in the last session, we saw actually how the accounting is done in the books of higher purchaser. And obviously in today's this particular session, we are going to learn uh, also how the accounting is done in the books of the vendor also. But let me actually just recap so far what we have done, correct? So you start writing now along with me. First of all, accounting in the books of accounting. In the books of purchaser accounting in the books of purchaser higher purchaser we saw in the last session that as far as purchaser is concerned basically he prepares two main accounts correct one is higher vendor account and besides that, he will prepare the asset account, higher vendor account from whom he has purchased the asset, higher vendor account. And he will also prepare the asset account, the asset which he has purchased. These are the two accounts which are prepared by the higher purchaser. In order to prepare these two accounts, we also saw, <coughs> we also saw in the last session actually how the accounting is done. Isn't it or not? <laughs> so, First of all, you write here for purchase of assets. The first entry generally in the generally on the date on which he will purchase the asset. This entry is done on that that particular date for purchase of asset. For purchase of asset. We saw in the last session that when he would purchase the asset the purchaser will write the entry asset account debit and this entry will be done with the cash price remember one thing cash price happens to be the cost price for purchaser asset account debit to higher vendor account that means this much of amount is payable to the higher vendor correct and then on the date of purchase we will pass another entry that is for down payment or down payment for down payment if you remember the entry which we passed in the last session for down payment is higher vendor account debit to bank account higher vendor account debit to bank account then we will read then we will reach the year end correct then we will reach the year end and at the year end we are going to pass entry first of all for interest due for interest due for interest due we are going to pass the entry interest due correct when we will reach the end of the year we are going to pass the entry for interest due if you remember the entry which we passed at the end of the year because we are the purchaser and interest will become due then it will be a loss for us so interest account debit and because interest has become due that means our liability towards higher vendor will increase so to higher vendor account we shall write then we are going to make the payment correct that is payment of installment at the end of the year we will pay the installment payment of installment when we will pay the amount entry will be higher vendor account debit to bank account higher vendor account debit to bank account and these two entry will get repeated correct at each year end but also at the year end as we saw in the last session the purchaser will provide depreciation also for depreciation because he has purchased the asset and in substance he happens to be the owner of the asset so that is why actually he will provide the depreciation the entry will be depreciation account debit to asset account depreciation account debit to asset account then finally just for the sake of understanding then finally at each year end he will also pass entry 
for writing of depreciation. For writing of depreciation and interest. Because depreciation and interest are losses and expenses for us, so that is the reason we are going to debit them to profit and loss account. Our entry will be profit and loss account debit to depreciation and to interest account. So at each year end, generally the purchaser pass purchaser would pass these entries. So not a very tough task. So as far as entries in the books of purchaser is concerned, that we saw even in the last session, correct? Now I will also talk about hire vendor, books of hire vendor. Hire vendor is the seller of the asset, books of hire vendor. Now you presume as if you are the seller, books of hire vendor. that is seller as far as seller is concerned he will prepare actually he too will prepare two main accounts one higher purchaser account one higher purchaser account generally he will prepare only higher purchaser account However, if higher purchaser would commit any default, if higher purchaser would commit any default, in that case, I told you about the default and I also told you about what we call higher purchase act. Do you remember? If any default will be committed by higher purchaser with respect to payment of any installment, in that particular case, higher purchase act actually provides a right to the higher seller that he can actually take back his assets. That is known as what we call reposition. So, if any default is committed by the higher purchaser, then the higher vendor or seller can repossess the asset. So, in that case, he would prepare also goods repossessed account. This account will be prepared only when default is committed. Repossessed, goods repossessed account. Correct? These two accounts generally he would prepare, but basically higher purchaser account is prepared by the higher vendor. In order to prepare the higher purchase account, first of all, because he is the seller, so he will write the entry for sale of asset. For sale of asset. When he will sell the asset, when he would sell the asset to higher purchaser, obviously he will debit the higher purchaser. Higher purchaser account debit. to asset account. Asset will move out because he has sold the asset to the higher purchaser so asset will move out and this much of amount he will have to receive from the higher purchaser. So that when higher purchaser is a sort of data for the seller because he has to receive price against the same. When he will sell the asset he will pass this entry and on the same date he will receive some amount for receipt of down payment. For receipt of down payment. When he will receive the down payment, he will pass the entry bank account debit to higher purchaser account. Bank account debit to higher purchaser account. So on the date of sale, generally these two entries are passed and when he will reach the year end, year end, at year end, first of all, he will also pass the entry for interest due. You are the seller. Now you are supposed to receive the interest. <laughs> now interest is a gain for you. But right now you are passing the entry for interest due. So when you will pass the pass the entry for interest due, you will debit higher purchaser because you have to receive this much of interest from the higher purchaser. <clears throat> higher purchaser account debit 
and then you are going to credit interest account because interest is a gain for you. Interest account. Correct? So, when interest you will make entry for interest due, that means you are supposed to receive more amount from the higher purchaser. So, you are going to debit higher purchaser. Obviously, now at the year end, you are going to receive the first installment, receipt of first installment or receipt of installment, in fact. So, when you are going to receive the installment, obviously your entry will be bank account debit to higher purchaser. Bank account debit to higher purchaser account. So, this is the entry you are going to pass in the books of what we call as far as vendor is concerned. One more entry you can pass that is transfer of interest to PNL because interest is a gain for you. Correct, the interest is a gain for you. So, obviously, you are going to transfer interest ultimately to the credit or profit or loss account. So, interest account debit. Now, you are closing the interest account. Earlier, it is credited. Now, you are debiting it and you are transferring it to profit or loss account. So, basically, these are the entries which would be passed by the, as I told you, uh, seller. Now, we pick up one more question just to acquaint you with the <clears throat> entire accounting process. We come back to the practical part. So, question number one, we have already done as far as question number 1.1 .1 is concerned, correct? Now, 1.2 states that Mr. X purchased a truck on higher purchase system. And the total cash price is this much. You need to note down the cash price very carefully. That is 31,960. Payable 8,000 as down. And 12,000, 10,000 and 4,000. Payable at the end of the first year, second year and third year respectively. Interest is 5%. And depreciation is 10% on a straight line method. So in this question, In this question so far, the information is like this, that X has purchased a truck. Mr. X has purchased a truck. Mr. X is the higher purchaser. He has purchased a truck and the total cash price of the truck is cash price. Total cash price which is given to us is 31,960. And further it is written in the question that the date on which we purchase the asset, we are supposed to, we are supposed to make a payment of 8,000 that is down payment. And further three more installments, one, two, three. The first installment is of 12,000 and next installment is 10,000. And as you can see, the last installment is 4,000. Besides in this question, it is also given that rate of interest is 5% per annum and rate of depreciation, ROD. The rate of depreciation is 10% on a straight line method. Correct? This is the entire scenario of this particular question. Now, So, this is the question and first thing is that you need to compute the interest and why we have to compute the interest I have already told you because ultimately our accounting will depend upon the fact that what portion of the installment we are paying for what we call cash price and what portion of the installment we are paying for what we call interest, correct? So, in order to solve the question, your first step should be, first step. Calculation of interest. Calculation of interest basically means we are trying to find out what portion of the installment relates to interest payment. Now, 
in order to find out your interest portion first of all you write here particulars or details whatever you may like to write correct after particular then uh, as we saw in the last session actually that we prepared a column that is cash price column so similarly you are going to prepare a column with cash price and now I would advise you that whenever you solve, uh, when, whenever you are go gonna compute calculate uh, compute interest, in that case, besides cash price, now you make a habit of preparing one more column, which I did not prepare in the last session. Correct. It is always better to prepare a column of gross installment, although it is not needed. To be very on very honest with you, then you make another column interest payment and cash price portion cash price portion correct now first of all in the cash price column you write the amount of cash price but what is the ca cash price that is 31960 as we saw 31960 this is our what we call cash price dates are not given we presume that in the beginning of the first year in the beginning of the first year, we are making down payment. The down payment in this case is 8,000 as you can see, correct? So 8,000. Now, even in the last class, I told you, whatever down payment you make, this down payment will not contain any element of interest because you are making this payment on the same date. That means this entire payment is for cash price portion. And remember, interest plus cash price portion makes your gross installment. When we say gross installment, the gross installment will include element of interest and element of cash price portion both. However, in the gross installment, this time we may say there is no interest element and entire what we call amount is related to cash price is it clear to you or not so whatever amount you have paid against the cash price that will have to be subtracted against the cash price so now we are left up with 23960 23960 down payment is also known as zero installment as i told you in the last session now we will reach the end of the first year at the end of the first year, I am going to pay the first installment. Now, in this question, the amount of first installment, as you can see, is actually 12,000. So, first in the column of the gross installment, you write 12,000. Is it clear to you? First in the column of the gross installment, you write 12,000 because this is the amount of installment. Now, what portion of 12,000 contains payment for interest? So, in order to know that, as I told you in the last session also, you have to now compute interest on 23,960. So, if I am going to compute 23,960 and rate of interest was 5%, so you will have to apply 5% to 23,960, you will get 1198. So, 1198 out of 12,000, you are paying 1198 for interest. You subtract 1198 from 12,000 to get 10,802, which reflects the payment for cash price. So out of 12,000, this much you paid for interest, this much you paid for cash price portion. You subtract 10,802 from this amount. So, 23,960 minus 10,802 will give me 13,138. 13,138. Now, we will reach the end of the second year. At the end of the second year, I will pay the second installment. As far as second installment is concerned, whenever we use the word installment, generally it means gross installment. Now, as far as your second installment is concerned, second installment is of 10,000. 
Now I will compute 5% of this amount. So 13,138 into 5%. Now, if I am going to compute 5% of 13,138, that will be equal to 658. So, 658 will be your, what we call interest payment out of 10,000. You subtract this figure from this one to get 9342. So, 9342 reflects the payment for cash price. Now, this 9342 will be subtracted from cash price because you paid this in the current year this much for cash price. After subtracting it, you will get 3816. Now, we have reached the end of the third year. End of third year. Third year end. Now, we are going to make the third installment. Amount of third installment is 4,000 as you can see. So, 4,000. Correct? First, you will write this. As I told you in the last session, that in the final year, we want this thing to be closed. Closed in the sense means I do not want any balance. How come it is possible that after payment, balance is nil, then my payment will be 3816. So, first you write here, correct, in the final year after writing the gross installment, first you write 3816, same figure here. This figure shows the payment for cash price portion, so you now write it under cash price portion, 3816. And now you take the difference of both these items, it will give you interest, 184. So, in the final year, you will have to be a little bit alert with respect to this thing. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. So, after having prepared the, after having computed the interest, now books of higher purchaser. Books of higher purchaser. In the books of higher purchase, we will prepare higher vendor account, higher vendor account. And besides that, we will also prepare asset account as we prepared in the last session. <coughs> So, first of all, <coughs> hire vendor will pass the entry for purchase of asset. This time he is purchasing a truck. So, you will write here, first of all, truck account debit to hire vendor account. Because this time, dates are not given. So, I will write here beginning of the first year. Correct? In the beginning, we will purchase the asset. Our entry will be asset account debit. Okay, I will write simply asset. Actually, we have purchased the truck. You can simply write truck account, but I have written now asset. And I told you in the last session also, this entry you will pass with the cash price. And cash price happens to be the cost price for the purchaser. 31,960. On the same date, on the same date, in the beginning of the first year, on the same date, you are going to make the payment down payment, higher vendor account debit to bank account. So, this is your down payment. Amount of down payment is 8000 which is given in the question. Now, you will reach the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, you are going to pass the entry for interest due. Interest account debit to higher vendor account. So, you will write here by interest. Interest in the first year as we just computed was 1198. 1198. Now, at the end of the first year, we will make the payment. First installment will pay. Our entry will be bank account debit to higher vendor account. Higher vendor account debit to bank account. Sorry. First installment. The first installment is of 12,000. See here, when we are paying the first installment 12,000, 
I told you we are paying 1198 for interest and the balancing figure we are paying for what we call cash price, correct? So when here we write 12,000, basically it means we are paying interest portion and cash price portion combinedly it is equal to 12,000, correct? So now we will balance it. The balance carried down. The balance carried down will be equal to 13,158. Now you will come to the second year. In the second year, in the beginning, you will write balance brought down. Balance brought down is equal to 13,158. At the end of the second year, all you have to do is to pass the entry for interest due, by interest. We have already computed interest earlier. Now if you remember, in the second year our interest is 658. So I will write here 658. And then I am going to pay the second installment to bank. Second installment. Second installment is of rupees 10,000. See here, when I am writing here 10,000, try to understand. It means actually I am paying 658 as interest and I am paying 9342 as cash price portion. So total amount I am paying 10,000. That is what we mean by writing here 10,000. Then we are going to write here balance carry down. Balance carry down. Three eight one six. So, as far as second year is concerned, your task is over. Now, our third year will start, and in the beginning of the third year, we shall write balance brought down. Three eight one six. Your balance is three eight one six. Once again, at the end of the year, you are going to pass the entry for interest due by interest. In the final year, we computed interest equal to 184. Then I am going to write here to bank 4000. This is my third installment. And now this account will stand closed. Is it clear? Then similarly we have to prepare an asset account also. But I told you even in the last session that it is a mere formality to prepare this particular account, asset account, in the books of the purchaser. First of all, in the first year, In the beginning, we will write here to hire vendor because we purchased an asset from the hire vendor and the amount is 31,960. Then we will reach the end of the first year. We will charge the depreciation. The depreciation will is 10%, so 3196 and so on. Now you will write here balance carried down. When you will write here your balance carried down, balance carried down will be 28,160. What will be the balance? 28,764. I think so. Then similarly, second year, beginning, you will write balance brought down. Balance brought down is 28,764. Then you will reach the end of the year. Again, you are going to write here depreciation. What will be the amount of depreciation in the second year? Remember one thing in this case, depreciation is on a straight line method. So it will remain 3196. Correct? So balance carry down. 25568. Second year task over. 
third year. In the third year, you will write here balance brought down once again. That is 3,100 balance, sorry, is 25,568. 25,568. Then you will reach the end of the year. You will charge the depreciation. The depreciation amount is 3196. So by the end of the third year, this balance, balance of this particular account is 22372. That means the date on which the ownership will pass to the purchaser, this asset is having a value of this much. And that is the, that is the what we call information which we derive from this then books of books of vendor in case if it is asked to prepare ledger account in the books of the vendor you should have a bit of idea i have already told you vendor will generally prepare one account that is higher purchaser account only. But he can prepare goods repurchased account if any default is committed by the purchaser. But in this question, no default has been committed. So we will prepare only higher purchaser account. Higher purchaser account, correct? So vendor will prepare higher purchaser account. Now you presume, as I told you earlier, while preparing the, while doing the accounting in the books of the purchaser, in the books of the, sorry, vendor. Now you are the vendor. You are going to sell the asset. First of all, in the first year, in the beginning, when you are going to sell the asset, your entry will be higher purchaser account debit to asset account. Correct? You have sold the truck having a cash price of 31,960. Correct? So you are going to write this entry. Now on the same date, now you are the purchaser. On the same date, you are going to receive down payment. Your entry will be bank account debit to higher purchaser account. The down payment is equal to 8,000. This is just reverse of higher vendor account which we prepared earlier. Now, when you will reach the end of the year, you are going to pass the entry for interest due. Entry will be higher purchaser account debit to interest account. We computed interest that is 1198. 1198. Then we are going to receive the first installment by bank. This is our first installment. The first installment is equal to 12,000. Is it clear? Now, balance carried down, we shall write 13,158. Then we will reach the sec second year. In fact, we will enter into second year. And in the beginning, we will write here balance brought down 13,158. Then at the end of the year, we are going to pass the entry for interest. Higher purchaser account debit to interest account. Now interest in the second year, if you remember, is equal to 658. Isn't it or not? <laughs> then we are going to receive the first installment. The first installment, sorry, we are going to receive the second installment. What is the amount of second installment? That is 10,000. Now you will simply write balance carried down. 
as far as balance carried down is concerned that is 3816 so this is as far as second year is concerned then third year in the beginning balance brought down we shall write the balance brought down is 3816 then we will reach the end of the year and we are going to pass the entry for interest due. The entry will be higher purchaser account debit to interest account. Then we are going to receive the final installment. Bank account debit. Final installment is of 4000. So quite obviously now this account will get closed. Is it clear to you or not? Perfect. So this is how we have to do as far as books of vendor is concerned. Now we come back to actually in this question our focus area is to make you understand how to compute the interest. Although we have now taken an overview also how the accounting is done in the books of purchaser and vendor both. Now after having done question number 1.2, now you should be in a position to do question number 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, and 1.7, 1.7 because and even 1.8, all these questions are of same pattern. All you have to do is just calculation of interest only in this particular question. Now I am picking up question number 1 point, in fact 1.9 also you can do, it is also given in a solved manner, it is just related to calculation of interest only. Now we are picking up question number 1.10. Actually when we compute interest, we may, have, we may confront and we may face actually four type of situation. Four type of situation, but you need not require to worry anything about that. But I don't think it's a pretty confusing or something like that. It is simple, don't worry about it. First nine questions are related to the methodology which we just adopted for computation of interest. We are going to compute the interest in the same manner. And now we are going to take second case. Now second case is known as pure installment case. What we mean by pure installment? That means earlier the question 1.1, 1.2 and even till up to 1.9, all these questions can be termed as gross installment case gross installment case and now we will take pure installment case now what is the difference between gross installment case and pure installment case i will tell you correct first we go through this particular question on 1st of january question states that on 1st of january 2018 mr 5 purchased a machine from mr 7 on higher purchase system the particulars are as follows. The cash price is 20,000. Now in this question, it is given to us that cash price is 20,000. Okay, I will write here cash price. Cash price is 20,000. Question says that 8,000 to be paid down at the time of signing agreement. Now we know that higher purchase price basically means down payment now down payment in this case is given to us as 8000 and question says that later on balance in fee is annual installment of 4000 rupees plus interest plus interest balance in three annual installment of 4000 rupees each plus interest whereas in earlier question which we did in earlier question or even 1.2 when we did it was simply written that balance in three installment of 12,000 10,000 correct when it is written installment is 12,000 12,000 or 10,000 it means installment is gross gross means this installment includes the what we call in interest element and what we call cash price portion element. For example, in question number one, which we did, 
here it was written that 10,000 was a down payment and three installment of 10,000, 10,000 each. So that is why these questions are related to gross installment case. Now, in this case, it is written, it is written that the balance in three annual installment of 4,000 each, not just this much is given. It is given in this manner that balance in three installment of 4,000 rupees each plus interest. That means our first installment, that means in this case, our first installment is 4,000 plus interest, plus interest. 4,000 plus interest will make the what we call gross installment. But we have been given 4,000. So 4,000 we can say is pure installment. And pure installment basically means the portion related to cash price. If I will add interest to it, then it will become gross installment. Similarly, your second installment is 4,000 plus interest. And similarly, your third installment is equal to 4,000 plus interest. 4,000 plus interest. So now if I am going to add, my higher purchase price will be equal to 20,000 plus interest. Higher purchase price will always be higher than the cash price and it will be higher by the amount of interest. Correct? Because cash price plus interest is equal to higher purchase price. So you have to exercise caution in this case that this time in the question, you are not given gross installment in absolute terms you are simply given what we call 4000 plus interest first you will have to fight the interest you will add it to 4000 then you can get the amount of gross installment correct i will tell you how you have to do although it is given in a solved manner but just these are initial questions so i will have to make you understand see here suppose in this question if i am going to compute the interest interest computation interest computation. So how I am going to compute the interest? Pay attention. I told you just a moment ago when you are going to compute the interest, you can write details or particulars. Then it is better to make a column of gross installment also. Gross installment, cash price, Then interest and then cash price portion. Actually, it is better, although it is not necessary, but I would like you to always prepare first better write cash price portion. It is always better to first write cash price. And then you write gross installment. S sir, you told this question is of pure installment, but you are writing here gross installment. Yes, you are right. Whenever we will do the gross installment computation, sorry, whenever we will do the interest computation, we will always frame the table in this manner. Correct? Details, cash price, gross installment, we shall write always interest and cash price portion. First of all, under the heading of cash price, this time I will write cash price, which is equal to 20,000. Correct? Now, in this question, rate of interest is 5%. Any date is given? Let me check. Any date was given in this question? I think it was given. On 1st January 2018. Well, the date is given in the question. So, I will write here on 1-1-2018. One, one, on this date, you are going to make down payment and the down payment is 8,000. I have told you now, down payment does not contain any interest element. This payment is always for cash price portion and interest plus cash price portion 
will form gross installment. So our gross installment is actually 8,000. Correct? Gross installment is also known as zero installment. After subtracting 8,000 from 20, we are left off with 12,000. Now we will reach the end of the first year, 31st of 12, 2018. And here I am going to write the first installment. The first installment, see whenever we use the word installment, make it a point. Whenever we are going to use the word installment, generally it means gross installment. So basically I want to know what is the amount of the gross installment. But problem is that in this question we are not having the amount of gross installment. I told you earlier because our first installment is 4000 plus interest. 4000 plus interest. So what I will have to do, I will have to first find out the interest which I can find. 12,000 into 5 percent, correct, that is equal to 600. You need not require to write here 12,000 into 5 percent, which I wrote in earlier questions. You can straight away write 600. So after having computed the interest, now I can say that my gross installment will be equal to 4,600. Is it clear to you? So there is hardly any difference between first and second method as you can see. So your gross installment is 4,600. Out of 4,600, 600 is interest. So 4,000 is basically your cash price portion. That is why I told you pure installment is nothing but portion which you are paying for cash price. So I am going to subtract 4,000 from 12,000. I will be left off with 8,000. Correct? Now, on 31st of 12, 2019, second installment. Once again, I am not having the gross installment because in the table, I have to always write the gross installment, whether the question is related to gross installment case or pure installment case. In the table, we have to write gross installment only. So first of all, what you have to do now, you compute 5% of 8,000, that happens to be 400. First, you have computed the interest. Now, your second installment will be 4,000 plus interest, that is equal to 4,400. Clear? Subtract 400 from 4,000, you will be left off with 4,000. Now, you subtract 4,000 from here. And you will be left up with 4,000. 31st of 12, 2020. Third installment. Again, I will compute the interest. Remember one thing in this method, that is in pure installment case, in the final year also, you will have to compute the interest. Then your installment will be 4,000 plus interest, 4,200. Subtract 200 from 4,200 to get 4,000. And now this will get close. I'm simply, I'm simply at this particular moment trying to tell you how interest is computed, correct? Although accounting you can do. But regarding accounting aspect, we will take later on other questions. Now, this was second case. This was second method of computation of interest. Now, we take the third method of computation of interest when rate of interest is not given. So far, we have done two methods, gross installment method, number one. And second, we did one is gross installment method, then pure installment method, and third case is when rate of interest is not given. Here it is given that X Limited purchased an LCD television under higher purchase from Y for a cash price of the cash price of the asset is 15,500, and the order of the payment was as follows. On signing amount, you are paying 3,000. At first year end, we are paying 5,000. Could you tell me this 5,000 is pure installment or gross installment? This is gross installment because this time it is not written that 
installment plus interest. So this time it is gross installment. This is also gross installment and this is also gross installment. So <clears throat> this time rate of interest is not given. When rate of interest will not be given to you, what you are going to do? First of all, you are going to compute. First of all, you always write cash price. Your cash price, as you can see, is equal to 15,500. 15,500. Then you compute your higher purchase price. We know that higher purchase price is down payment, which is given in the question as 3,000. Then first installment is 5,000. Second installment is 5,000. And third installment is 5,000. So total is equal to 13,000. 18,000. So higher purchase price is 18,000. The difference between the cash price and higher purchase price is known as interest. So what is your interest? Total interest. Total interest. Total interest is equal to 2,500. Now in this question rate of interest is not given rate of interest percentage is not given. So how we will determine that how we will determine that each installment uh, contains so much of interest. So how we are going to determine that. So after analyzing the question under such questions what you will have to do First, you will have to write total higher purchase price. Total higher purchase price. That is equal to 18,000. First, you write it. Then you subtract your down payment from it. After subtracting the down payment, what is the balance? What is the balance? That is 15,000. Correct? You write this balance as first installment. Sorry, first balance. It will be termed as first balance. Then you subtract your first installment. Now first installment, first installment is 5,000. We are left off with 10,000. Second balance. Again, it's a pretty boring this one, but can't help it. Then you simply write second installment. Your second installment is also 5,000. Then you are left off with third balance. The third balance is 5,000. And then finally, you subtract the third balance. The third balance is 5,000. So now nothing is left. Correct? Now, you take the ratio of step number C, computation of interest. In order to compute the interest, first you write here serial number of balance amount of balance ratio and interest 
see here, your first balance is five, 15,000, then 10,000, then 5,000, correct? You write here, first balance, first balance is 15,000. Then you write here second balance. Second balance is how much? That is equal to 10,000. And so on. Then you simply write 5,000. Correct? Now you take the ratio. Ratio is 1, 2, 3. What is the total? That is 6. Now you divide the interest in this particular ratio. For example, your interest amount was 2,500 which you computed earlier. Correct? You computed the interest 2500. Now 2500 into 3 by 6 that is equal to how much? That will be equal to 1250. And so similarly 2500 into 2 by 6 you are going to apply them. That will be equal to 834. 2500 into 1 by 6, that will be equal to 460. So this is how you are going to find out the interest. That means, now we have found out what is the interest element in the installment. For example, now I can say that as far as my first installment is concerned, correct? This, this installment contains 1250 as interest element. And balance, of course, will be your cash price portion. Similarly, your second installment contains 834 as interest element and balance will be your cash price portion. You need not require to do your solution is already over. Just to make you understand. Similarly, your third installment contains 416 as interest and balance as cash price portion. This is how you are going to compute. I have solved this question also here. <clears throat> then there is another method. Of computation of interest. Generally this method which we are going to do is not asked in the long questions but some short questions could be asked of you related to computation of interest only. Correct? When, when rate of interest is not given that you can do but now next is when cash price is not given. Even 1.3 you can do. <clears throat> you can do 1.12 when rate of interest is not given, we just compute it. Even 1.14, even 1.15, 1.16, 1.17. Correct? And now, <coughs> we will go for when cash price is not given. So, when cash price is not given, how interest is computed, that is going to be the theme of this particular session but before i do that we will take a five minutes break and then we will continue five minutes break correct
So welcome again to this particular session. In fact, uh, after the break, correct? Now the third method, this method, three methods so far we have done. First three methods are not at all tough as you must have seen as far as calculation of interest is concerned. However, in the fourth method, you have to exercise a bit of care, correct? Sometimes questions are simply asked of four or five marks wherein you will be asked to compute the interest and generally such questions come from this particular method. In this method we will see that cash price is not given. So when cash price is not given and you know that without finding cash price we cannot do the uh, costing. We cannot do the what we call entire accounting because cost price is of paramount importance. Correct. Martin Super Taxi Services purchased the taxis on 1st of January of the current year from Suzuki Services on higher purchase system. Now, on the first day of we paid 10,350 and first installment at the end of the first year is 19,965. Then again, 19,965. Again, 19,965. Interest is 10% per annum. And of course, depreciation is given, but importantly, we are concerned with only what we call rate of interest, correct? So how to do this, this sort of question? Just pay attention. Just give me a minute or so. So here, now, now what is the situation in this particular question? At the beginning, the down payment is given to us as 10,350, correct, down payment. Then at the end of the first year, the first installment is 19,965, of course it is gross installment, at the end of the first year, first year end. At the second year end, again 19,965. And of course, at the third year end, 19,965. In this question, problem is that we are not having the cash price. The cash price is missing. Cash price is not known. Further, you have been given that rate of interest is 10% per annum. Now, how to solve such question? Pay attention here. When cash price is not given, in that case, first of all, what you are supposed to do? First of all, you will have to pay attention to the rate of interest, correct? Now, rate of interest, you must know whenever we say rate of interest is 10% per annum. What does it mean? It always means, whenever we say rate of interest 5%, 10%, 8%, what does it mean? It means that is, that is, if cash price portion, if cash price is 100, then your interest is 10. That means rate of interest is always on cash price. This is the first thing which you need to understand, correct? rate of interest whenever it is given it always means the rate of interest is on cash price is it clear to you or not yes sir if it is known to you then the next point is that rate of interest is always on cash price it means if cash price is 100 our rate of interest is 10 our rate of interest is 10 and so many times i have told you that cash price plus interest combinedly frames the gross installment or simply installment because word installment always means gross installment. That is 110. Correct? Rate of interest 10% per annum means your cash price is 100 and interest is 10. Automatically it means your higher purchase installment is 110. So now the first thing which you will have to do is now you will have to convert this rate of interest which is always which is always on cash price 
you will have to convert it into rate of interest on installment. We can do so. We have learned it in branch how to do that. Correct. So I would now say that rate of interest, rate of interest on higher purchase installment, on higher purchase installment will be equal to, we will keep the interest in the numerator and I will divide it by installment that is, that is 110. So this should be our first task to convert the rate of interest from cash price to what we call rate of interest on higher purchase installment price. Is it clear to you or not? Right, absolutely right. After this, what we are supposed to do? After this, then you write here details. In fact, instead of details, this time you better write Serial number of installment, serial number of installment, correct? Then you write here, uh, installment amount, installment amount, then you write interest, and then you write cash price portion. Now, very important that you have to start from the last installment. That is very important. The last installment is third installment. What is the amount of the third installment? This is the third installment. The amount is 19,965. So write the amount 19,965. 19,965. Correct? We have to start with the last torment. Now, what will be the amount of interest included in it? The amount of interest will be equal to 19,965 because this is higher purchase installment. I will use this rate. That is 1 by 11 in fact. This is 1 by 11. I have written 1 by 10. This is 1 by 11. 10 by 110 or 1 by 11. So, you will have to use this rate. That means in this installment, your interest element will be equal to this much. If I will compute it, I will now need a calculator. It will be equal to 19,965 divided by 11. That is equal to 1815. That means interest included in this installment is equal to 1815. Is it clear to you? Now I will subtract it from this amount, 19,965 to get 18,150, 18,150. This is my cash price portion. This is how I will be able to determine. Now we will come over to second installment. We have to move in reverse. Now amount of second installment is also 19,965. But when you will compute the installment, when you will compute the interest on this installment, how will you do so? In order to compute the installment, see here what I am doing. First, I will write this installment amount, 19,965. And I will add to it 18,150. I will add to it 18,000. 150. Why I am supposed to add cash price portion again to it? Because remember one thing, when I am at the end of the second year, correct? The interest is always computed on the balance amount. For example, in the earlier cases from the cash price, we subtract down payment and whatever balance is there, that balance reflects the total payment which we are supposed to receive in the next three years, two years or whatever it is. Similarly, now at this moment, we are at the end of the second year. At the end of the second year, that means we haven't paid the third installment. So interest will also be computed on the third installment. Interest is always computed on the balance. So 19,965. This is the balance plus 18,150 because this is the balance of the third amount. 
Are you getting my point or not? Because interest is computed on the balance amount. We are at the end of the second year. Now you may ask me a question. Sir, if we are supposed to add, then why we are not adding 19,965? Reason being is that when I am at the end of the second year, on this installment, interest hasn't become due. Are you getting my point or not? That mean, when we are at the end of the second year, the, uh, the amount of this installment is equal to 18,150. That is the reason we have to add it. So, you will add... 18,150 plus 19,965, that is equal to 38,115. And now you multiply it by 11, divided by this, you will get 3465. So your interest will be 3465. You multiply it by 1 by 11. Are you getting my point or not? When I am at the end of the second year, Total balance is this much. You can say this way around. Total balance is this much and you apply this rate, 3465 will be your interest. So we may say that in this installment, interest portion is this much and I will subtract 3465 from this amount 19,965. So it is equal to 16,500. Similarly, now I will reach the first installment. See, when I am in the first year, that mean amount due is, first of all, I will have to find out the total amount due. In order to find out the total amount due, I will write first of all this installment 19,965 plus I will add 16,500 plus I will add also 18,150. This total shows that when you are in the first year, total amount due is this much. So interest will be computed on this amount. You multiply it by 1 by 11. So it's 19,965 plus 16,500 plus 18,150, 54,650 divided by 11, that is 4,965. So your interest will be equal to 4,965. 4965. Is it clear to you or not? Your interest is equal to 4965. In order to find out the interest, I have written interest here. Interest should be written over here. I will write here 4965. And I will subtract 4965 from 19,965. It will be equal to 15,000. Cash price portion is equal to 15,000. Now we will come to the zero installment. Zero installment means down payment. And down payment in the question was given to us as 10,350. So 10,350 is your down payment. So you will have to write your down payment 10,350. And in the down payment, we know that there is no interest at all. So I will write here 10,350. Is it clear? Now, if, it, I, if I'm going to add all the cash price portion, that will let me know the cash price. So, cash price is 18,150 plus 16,500 plus 15,000 and plus 10,350, that is 60,000. So, 60,000 will become your cash price. Is it clear to you or not? Now, you can prepare the account also. Is it clear? Suppose if I am going to ask you in the books of purchaser how you are going to prepare the account. Books of purchaser. In the books of purchaser you are going to prepare higher vendor account and in the higher vendor account First of all, you are going to write on 1 1 2018 by asset account, and this time the asset are taxi. So you will start with the cash price 60,000. 
then on 1 1 2018 you are going to make the down payment that is to bank and down payment which you just computed 10,350 then we will reach the end of the first year 31st 12 2018 in the first year we will make the interest due now you have to be careful in this particular case your interest actually in the first year is 400, 4965 this is the first year in fact so 4965 correct and then you are going to make the first payment 31st of 12 2018 your first installment will be equal to this much first installment that is 19,965 and then you are going to write here to balance carry down now if I am going to compute the balance 60,000 plus 4,965 minus 10,350 minus 19,965 the balance will be equal to 34,650 So as far as first year is concerned, the task is already over. Now 1-1-2019, one, one, we are going to write here the balance brought down first of all. Balance brought down is equal to 34,650. Correct? Now we will reach the end of the first, second year, 31st of 12, 2019. I am going to write interest we have already computed the interest interest as far as second installment is concerned 3465 3465 now on 31st of 12 2019 you are going to write here to bank that is your second installment amount is 19965 then you will write here to balance carry it down. 34,650 plus 3465 minus 19,965. So balance is equal to 18,150. Second year task is over. Now we come over to 1-1-2020. Balance brought down. 18,150 by interest now if I am going to compute the interest in the final year it was 1815 1815 you can see now when I will make the final payment to bank, third installment, 19,965. So this account will automatically get delete. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are going to prepare. Actually, I just wanted to give you a bit of idea how you are going to prepare the accounting in this particular case. Is it clear to you or not? Now, so you can do till up to, till up to, now 1.8, you can do 1.19, 1.20, simply calculation of interest, 1.21, 1.22 and 1.3, correct? Besides, there are some other cases 24 and even you can do 1.25 it is miscellaneous case 1.26 you can do this one also so i i will do for you 1.27 nvt i will do these two questions and then and then i will do 1.24 this question will be done by us, correct? 
So we shall meet you then in the next session. I think in this session there is more than sufficient. So shall continue with this particular topic and then we'll move over to the next topic in the next session too. So till then it's goodbye.